Hi there YouTube, this is Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and today is an October wrap up uh, currently reading. So um, as you know last uh, month or at the beginning of the month I posted a video and kind of explained how I'm going to be approaching my TBR moving forward and I just wanted to kind of update you as to where I am with that. So I did have one library book out called The Owl Always Hunts at Night by Samuel Bjork. Um, that was a translated fiction from the Norwegian and that was by, let me find the translator, apologies, Charlotte Barsland. Um, that was a very good book for me. That was a four star read. That was a Munch and Kruger police um, thriller slash procedural. Um, they're a unique uh, team and they, they it's a really, really compelling and easy to read book. It was one of these things that was quite... Um, it draws you in to the point where you want to pick up and read another chapter and also because the chapters are quite short you can read like a chapter and put it down and go and do something and uh, that particular book was about um, some children who unfortunately were exposed to a form of cult when they were very young uh, as their mother married um, a wealthy individual and because they weren't allowed to have children from a previous relationship. She sent them over to be with these people in Australia and it turned out to be a cult and it was the knock-on effect psychologically and emotionally that changed the life of one of the siblings and it's the uh, response and reaction to that lifestyle but also obviously... Um, there are murders involved that uh, Munch and Kruger then have to invest investigate. As with um, I'm Travelling Alone, which is the first in the series, uh, there is some involvement of Munch's family. The first one involved his granddaughter, this one um, more heavily revolves around his daughter and also how she perceives her life to be and what she would like it to be and I just generally really thoroughly enjoyed it and gave it four stars. Uh, the other book that I read at the end of October which was on my Kindle was uh, Margaret Atwood's The Testaments. I think as I said to you previously I was at 16% and it was again another one of these books. Couldn't put it down, had to read it to the bitter end, constantly read every day, um, an element of it to enable me to move forward and in my eyes I know it's not had a necessarily positive review from other people but I thought it was a good move forward. It didn't focus on um, Offred, um, it didn't continue straight on from the end of The Handmaid's Tale which I think might have been a bit difficult for Atwood to have done after so many years away from uh, the world. But it did give us the viewpoint of Aunt Lydia, who's that awful, brutal, savage lady that we meet in The Handmaid's Tale and gives us a very different perspective of her instigation into Gilead, how she found herself to be in that position, uh, her involvement throughout a number of years, um, both pre the Handmaid's Tale and post. We get to meet um, some amazing characters of young women that are growing up in this religion. So they're growing up in this controlled environment and also we get to see a, a female character who has grown out outside of that experience and uh, the involvement that that has for her as well. I don't want to give any spoilers, I think it's a very personal preference, there are people out there who have loved it, there are people out there who have not enjoyed it, there are people out there who have thought it was kind of middle of the road. I gave it five stars because I found it a compelling read. I didn't take it as a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, I took it at face value, I took it as a standalone book um, and I feel if you can approach it in that respect you might get slightly more from it than if you're trying to compare it to Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Obviously this book has also uh, won the Booker 
since then, which was quite controversial, obviously, to have two female authors win a book prize. And I know there's been some quite harsh comments and um, sort of things said about the fact that they were two winners. In my opinion, I don't think it hurts to have a joint winner. It's It wouldn't be the first time in the life of... Um, the, you know readers that we've felt torn between two books and although I do feel that uh, the other winner um, probably deserved to have the accolade all to their, themselves uh, I, I can't comment I haven't read that second book I'm currently I think 71st in the queue in the library for that book so if I'm lucky I might get to it before the next book prize winner next year um but yes, so The Testaments is divisive. It's up to you how you want to approach it. Uh, but I approached it as a standalone and thoroughly enjoyed it. Another book that I had out from the library, which I've obviously had to return, was The Gospel of Loki by Joanne M. Harris. I did actually get the sequel out as well. However, I DNF'd this book. And the reason behind that was um, basically it didn't feel anything new it just felt very much um like a, a complete blow by blow retelling of um the the story um it didn't feel like there was anything different it didn't feel any un uniqueness to it i didn't feel particularly in the first sort of 60 70 pages that loki's character stood out as anything sort of unique um he didn't even have the charisma that you kind of have seen in tom hiddleston's portrayal of him and i know i shouldn't compare it to marvel so before anybody comments down below please don't i know it doesn't compare to marvel um because it's two separate things it's myth and cartoon but i just didn't feel the myths really sold it to me at all i was quite bored when i was reading it i found it quite slow going quite thick i felt like i was wading through mud and so for that reason i decided to dnf it i am still currently reading the waves by virginia wolf i know um some of my fellow buddy readers had to unfortunately pull out of reading this book I have had to put this on pause at the moment, partially because I'm not in the headspace to read a book like this, um, but also partially because I've had some um, changes in my parents' life that have meant that I'm just needing a slightly lighter read, maybe, that hasn't involved so much kind of note-taking and, and thought process. And I don't want to disrespect Virginia Woolf's writing I'm I'm really enjoying it I thoroughly love it but I want to give it the respect it's due and I just don't think I can do that at the moment and so part of my reason for not doing that I have skipped to a middle grade and this is Pages and, Go and Co Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales now this is the second in a series by Anna James the first book was uh, Tilly and the Book Wanderers and it follows on basically from Tilly and the Book Wanderers and this shows um, Tilly and Oscar and we find out a little bit more about Oscar and what um, has enabled Oscar to be able to book wander with Tilly. Uh, we find a little bit more out about her family, about the underlibrary and uh, we go into the fairy tale realm which is quite good fun and uh, obviously we see the big bad wolf and Rapunzel from slightly different twisted aspects but in a fun way and there's obviously an underlying story in there as well we do see the return of uh, I can't remember the chap's name now uh, I'm thinking Elliot, but I might be wrong. Enoch. Enoch? I can't remember. I'm so sorry. And it'll probably take me forever to try and find it in here. But again, beautiful hardback, beautiful inside pages, lovely naked hardback people. I mean, look at that beautiful graphics. Although I will say that 
Oscar on the book cover is white and yet throughout the illustrations inside and from the descriptions that we have been given Oscar is a person of colour so I'm not quite sure I mean small trivial thing but there you go so uh, that was Pages and Co and it's a middle grade book highly recommend it for anyone um, sort of eight plus depending on their reading level and I thoroughly enjoyed it four stars after that I picked up um, a small book that I recently um, saw in London and this is Lie With Me by Philippe Bisson this is read, uh, translated by Molly Ringwald and I don't know it depends on how old you are I'm um, in my 40s and so Molly Ringwald was an actress um, and still is an actress but she also writes now and she translated this from the original French uh, she was part of the John I think it was John Williams sort of 80s films you know Pretty in Pink um, all those kind of era of films uh, I won't go on in case you're substantially younger than me while you're watching this but this is an LGBTQ story following Philippe and Thomas during a time in the 80s 1984 to be exact and they are at high school and it's the uh, love affair that starts that that ignites there's some secretive aspects to it I think Thomas is struggling somewhat with his sexuality um, and and struggling to embrace that and the connection that they have and then they'll the respective paths they then choose to follow and this then goes into 2007 and then 2013 so it's based around three chapters it's 148 pages it's a slight book but it packs a punch and it has lingered with me um the character of both thomas and philippe for their own characteristics have stayed with me for, for very different reasons but uh, as an LGBTQ plus book, this is um, phenomenal. I couldn't put it down. I had to ration myself with, because I'm reading other books, um, to sort of 30 pages a day, uh, just to keep this going as well, because I was so thoroughly enjoying it. I really didn't want it to come to an end. But those 148 pages do cover the story concisely from their meeting right the way to the end. And it will leave you with a hangover. It will definitely leave you with a book hangover. You will want to go for something completely different once you've picked up this book. I found it really moving. At times I felt I had a little bit of sort of a lump in my throat. I felt a bit devastated for, for the characters and how things were. Um, but also there was a gentleness and an intrinsic love in the book, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So cannot recommend this enough. Uh, Matt uh, I don't know if you are, um, I think you're now in Europe, but if you're watching this, please pick this up, mate. I think you'll love it. And I know I've already messaged um, Ollie Bliss to say, if not already done so, you've got to read this book. I loved it. Can't rave about it enough. Five stars. So now I'm on to what I'm currently reading. And so I have got three currently reading books uh, one is a library book one is from my book stash and one is a uh, kindle purchase um, so again book stash but kindle book stash so tick 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 the first one I'm going to talk about is his bloody projects this is um, Roderick McRae's uh, true story from Graham McRae Burnett who I believe is a family member and this is a true story based on a murder in Scotland. And this is going through um, where where they, um, the facts behind the case of the murder, basically. I am currently 110 pages in. It is quite small writing. Um, what I'm finding with this is it is quite slow going. I'm feeling it's quite. Um, the writing style is quite different because he's had to put in um, paragraphs and things to break it up because obviously the original was written uh, quite conclusively without any kind of uh, full stops, paragraphs, that kind of thing. It was the Man Booker Prize 
um, winner. No, sorry, the Man Booker, the, 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 the Man Booker Prize shortlisted book of 2016. It's taken me this long to get here, people, but I am enjoying it, and I will stick with it, and I will put it in my next wrap up. That's what I'm currently reading. I'm also reading the third in the Munch uh, and uh, the Munch series, and this is the boy in the headlights. This is uh, Samuel Bjorg again, a library book cover. Excuse the sort of the floppiness and the and everything else. This is again translated by Charlotte Barsland, and we are reinstating our relationship with Munch and Kruger. And Kruger is now um, a little bit less run by medication and her addictions and her past family scenarios. We are also now getting to meet some of the other team. So we're getting a bit more detail into Curry and he used to be part of the drug um, department of the police before he joined Munch and Kruger's department and this is again a murder procedural police thriller so I am currently at 186 pages so I'm hoping to have concluded this in my next wrap up and last but not least on the currently reading is a kindle book and this is one that was raved and raved and raved about when this first came out and it's still being raved about and it's still being commented on and it still appears on my Twitter feed and it still appears on Instagram and it's still appearing on YouTube which to me says this is a good book this is a book that will last this will see the test of time from its initial sort of blurb and excitement and I, I was really quite surprised um, that I didn't pick it up when it first came out. I bought it but didn't pick it up and I think the problem again with that was it was lingering in my TBR pile on my Kindle which as a lot of us know that own Kindles you tend to pick up books especially if they're on 99p deals or whatever and uh, so that is Laura Purcell's the Silent Companions. So that is my current reading on my Kindle. I am at 22% at the moment. It is Victorian, it is dark, it is gothic. I've got to the point at the moment where the main character is clearly in some kind of mental health institution. There has been a, a death in her life. She is widowed. Um, she was pregnant at the time of being widowed. We don't know what's happened. Uh, we're just getting into the... Finer, um, finer details in the minute now of the house where she's living in which is in a very rural kind of countryside there's clearly a family history that her husband had that is going to affect the story and perfect for Halloween perfect for cozy reading night and uh, yes I look forward to reading that so that is my October uh, wrap up slash currently reading I hope you're all well um, if you've got any recommendations, please let me know down below. There will be a video following shortly in the next couple of days, which is um, twofold. One's a library uh, library um, book haul. One is a, a small book haul that I did when I was in London on Monday to see uh, the theatre show Big. And then I will be doing a November TBR. So I hope you're all well and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.